What's up, guys? Welcome, Muscle Memory. My name is Malcolm. We're here at MCW Fan Jam with Melina. How are you? I'm <laughs> doing good. That's good. That's good. What's your favorite part of meeting fans here at MCW Fan Jam today? Oh, my goodness. It's the whole history of it because everybody's been here around MCW for the last 25 years. And it's amazing because everybody asks me, like, did they train you? And I'll tell them, no, but you know what? This was my home after WWE. Yeah. You were the women's champion you know? here before. Yes. Yeah. So it's kind of like, and then to see all the girls and everybody across the board, like, they're all, they grew up. To see when they first started, and then now you're seeing them like WWE, like um, AEW, and all this yeah. stuff. It's like, oh my goodness, I remember when they were babies. <laughs> so it's beautiful to come back here all the time, any chance I get. For sure, for sure. And like, there's a women's title right over there. I don't know if you can see it, but any thoughts of like maybe trying to go after that title? Any other titles came back in the ring, wrestling again? No, everybody keeps wanting me to go back. I'm I like, try. Nah. It, I'll never say never, but. You know, right now I'm like, no, it's their time. It's yeah. their time. Fair, fair. And then one moment I'll pick my spot, and it's like, this person needs to learn a lesson, so let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> so SummerSlam's coming up very soon. It's a very famous yeah. match that everyone knows about when it comes to your career. It's Melina versus Alicia Fox. Like that, it, it sometimes it gets memed as like it was supposed to be like some match that wasn't great, but I thought it was great. Oh, I thought it was goodness. perfect. Everybody brings it up. I actually watched it with Fox um, recently. Really? So, like, yeah. Uh, it was the first time she's ever watched it, and I've all watched it since then. What did y'all think of your and, match? Of and that, we watched it, and it's like, you know what? We were good. Screw that. Screw that. Still good. It Still good. good. There are some moments, like this, this particular match, like we knew what we did, and that was kind of like off. I forgot what happened, where I, I think she wasn't feeling good or something. And when we watched it, it was like the part that we thought went wrong didn't at all there you go. and it was all in our hands like yeah. it's so it's so crazy what we like we what we, we think could create like was bigger in our minds than it was in actual like in reality and then we were because of that watching that match we started watching other matches and you know what she did she was so great for that that moment in time where um she was new and I told her, look at your bumping, look at this. <laughs> and any kind of disagreement that we had, and, I, and we, I talked to her about it. I said, did you understand? I saw myself in you, and you're young and new. The things I, I wanted to teach you, it wasn't to undermine you. It was to tell you what you're capable of. And she's like, I see that now. And I said, yeah, but I wish I found the right way to show you so that I, like, there wasn't this, you didn't get upset. Like, you yeah. didn't take it wrong. It was because I was so proud of you. And she's like, I see that now. And I said, but, and now she experienced what I experienced. Yep. So it's kind of like, I didn't want her to go through that stuff. I didn't want her to protect her from it. But, you know, we all have to go through a certain path. It is what it is, yeah. yeah. And, like, looking at, like, some of the current women stars right now in WWE, Trish Stratus is on this new run in WWE right now. Face off against Becky Lynch, probably at SummerSlam. What's your thoughts on her run right now coming back into the wrestling world? Uh, it's a great thing. Like, it, uh, so many things are beautiful to see, and some things are, like, it's only certain personality types or certain um, – of the company's chosen people are allowed to do that because we could bring back a jazz and you'll hear me say the same people because I love them and they're the ones that enhance Trisha's career so they're the people who made Trish look good she's great in her own right you know she knows how to sell she knows how to tell a story and it's great but the work wise in the ring you know, there are people who enhanced her, who's taught her that, who show, who, and yeah. who carried her through matches. They need their credit. They do. And we, if only we could bring them back, but we don't want to bring them back because we only have our people who are the, the people we choose yeah. for whatever reason that is. And it's like when they brought Mickey back, why didn't they get, put her in a storyline like that? There are certain people where you question, they are good talent, good people, they um, hard workers. Why didn't we give them those opportunities? For sure. And I love seeing our favorite people come back, like Alita and Trish, but at the same time... So many others. How about the others? How yeah. about the others? Not so much. I'm not saying me. You know what I mean? I don't care if I ever come back or not. I'm happy with any opportunity I get. Yeah. But I do question when it comes to all these other women from the past or even the present there's women in the present that deserve these opportunities too so it's kind of like i hope the story i haven't watched so i don't know so i hope that it does give women passing of the torch because we didn't get that in our in our in our era it was like do the job and then that's it put over the veterans respect so I hope the passing of the torch happens at some point. But is it enhancing the women of today? Are we doing our part? 
are we giving them great storylines? And I'm sure we, they, they are, if it's like more than one day. <laughs> but I hope it is happening, because they deserve that. The women of the day do it. But it's like, how about let's enhance a girl from NXT instead of like main roster players that are already existing. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And like, looking at like the women's like division right now, do you feel like the WWE Women's Division or any other division needs like a mid card title? I feel like there's so many women on the roster that might deserve to have an opportunity for a championship that maybe don't get that title, like being in the main feuds on the show. Oh man, I'm so the wrong person to ask about You're anything. <laughs> Even right now, I know people are like, "Well, what you are you shooting on the like Trisha storyline?" I'm not. It's just this viewpoint of how do we enhance other people? How yeah. do we tell a story? How do we? You know, instead of just doing it so then I could get my clout and then, like, get my, like, like, um, I want people to remember me, say thank you to me, and then I leave. No, <laughs> it's about progression, giving back, furthering the storyline, furthering these women. Like, that's what it's all about for me. And that's what I didn't get to have. People didn't give me anything. I had to do it for myself, which is great, you know? I'm not asking for a rub, but... Nowadays, I don't think people know how to make their own um, breakthroughs in wrestling, tell their own stories when people don't give it to you. And that's why I think the lack of a belt is good because I don't need a belt to make me who I am. You need to tell your story in the ring. Yeah. You need to find a way to make you that sets you apart from everybody else. And I think the lack of a title makes a person hungrier to be able to uh, to find a way to be set apart. I mean, that's a hot take. I, I appreciate that. I never really thought about it that way. And I guess like one of my last questions for you, Melina, is like there's some stuff that was happening on Twitter. People had certain comments to say about situations that happened in your past while being in the WWE. And you said like it, it took you to a dark place and you yeah, at one point wanted to commit suicide. Like looking back at like maybe not that situation, but like looking at someone bringing that up on Twitter. What, what do you have to say to people like that that bring up these like false allegations? I always say that I don't blame people because how are they supposed to know? You know, if if I don't talk about it and we're not open about it, you're left to assume that whatever you read on, whatever you, you know, you were on could be true. And then especially when masses, more people start to like, you know, rehashing yeah. the, the rumor. Uh, one rumor, one fire, it's like a little, um, burning ember and all of a sudden it becomes a flame of fire that's just uncontrollable and it's hard to control that and what can I do so for years it's like you you could tell yourself and this is what my family and everybody told me you know the truth as long as you know the truth and that's what you tell yourself like it's not real as long as you know the truth but when it starts getting out of hand and this becomes your life 15 years later 20 years later when is it all going to stop? When are people going to realize what what is reality? And then it's up to me to re-educate people, to educate them on what the reality is and what happened. Because you know why? I believe that right now, I like especially when I write my book, hopefully if I ever do. <laughs> you will. Oh, you will. Go happen. I want people to see if they've ever went through it, that they could overcome it or to prevent it and catch themselves if they're a person who's like starting the rumors, if they're a person who's a bully, or if they're being bullied, what to do. Like what is possible to stop it or to just know that you can overcome it. And this is the thing, like I have to show people and I'm not gonna fight. I understand that people at some point they were hurt by somebody else or they were cheated on, da 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 da. They don't understand what happened with me and what how it one person who just appointed a finger ruined not only my life but a bunch of other people's lives yeah but all the focus was on me that you didn't realize all the people you affected yeah. and you, i just had to pick up and keep working keep working because that's the only thing i could do and when you're working 365 days a year i'm away from my family i'm away from my friends and all i have to keep come for me is work and then when i was injured i had nothing and that's when like you, you go down the rumor like rumors and you hear all these things and you question yourself it was a dark dark time and, and I guess like there's so much like outpour for you on Twitter a lot of people giving your flowers as they should you definitely deserve it I feel like there's so many people that like just want to look into a situation they know nothing about and to those people you should touch grass go outside it might help you sometimes just go touch grass make friends it might work for you but yeah, you definitely yeah. deserve your flowers i think more people need to tell you that you're such a legend i appreciate you so much for like this oh, interview and just everything <laughs> of course of course it's so weird because like i think people loved a character so much or they love to hate her so much or it was just so hateable i don't know but it's like 
I couldn't be anything other than the character. Yeah. And nobody saw me. Nobody saw like how like I go out and donate blood. How I'm a family person. I'm always there for my family. I love them. And it's like I what I do and go out of my way for my family and friends. And nobody saw any of that. It was just you're that bitch. And it's like I uh, no. And and it's interesting to think even my own coworkers. We never take the time because we're focused on storyline, survival, trying to move up in the in the in our positions, all this crazy that even years later they they looked at me like we have a conversation they're like, "Oh, was that true?" And I said, "Yeah." We finally had a conversation 18 years later and we knew nothing about each other and we were around each other more than our own families. <laughs> it's an interesting realization of how we interact with people on a day-to-day -day basis even our co-workers maybe sometimes even our own family we we have small chit chat but we don't ever have ask the in-depth questions. Like questions yeah yeah and then we wonder why did we didn't know they were going through that we didn't know that was happening to them because we never asked those deep questions yeah melina thank you so much for this i really appreciate it i mean like anyone out there again touch grass it works I give you guys hugs. No, 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 no hugs. You don't deserve a hug. No, go touch grass. They need hugs. No, they don't. <laughs> Melina, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Where do they find you on social media and not already following you? Uh, go to realmelina.com and you'll find everything Real Melina there. Everything, every, all my social media. Amazing. <laughs> my name is Malcolm. This is Melina, MCW Fan Jam, and we're out. Channel, this is squeeze. If you like the channel, this is squeeze. If you like the channel, this is squeeze.